Bishop Wooden here, and I am honored to be flanked by two awesome women of God, two preachers, two women who are serious about Jesus Christ, serious about their walk with the Lord, and I know them both, that they walk the walk and talk the talk. They are born again, spirit-filled, godly women. To my right, evangelist, missionary, Patricia Lester, and to my left, deaconess, uh, missionary, Yvette Thompson. These women love the Lord, and the reason that they are helping me, as you watched it segment two, they have actually been on the world stage. They have, they were a part of the 1995 tour, the father and son tour uh, with uh, uh, Gerald Levert and Gerald's dad, Eddie Levert. And when they say they toured, I mean, toured they did. They traveled across the U.S., the Houston Arena Theater, uh, Dallas Music Hall uh, at Fair Park, and uh, 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 Atlanta, uh, uh, Birmingham, Alabama, uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at the Man Music Center, Raleigh, North Carolina, Walnut uh, uh, Amphitheater, uh, Walnut Creek right here in town, uh, Baltimore, Charlotte at the Charlotte Coliseum, uh, Constitution Hall, um, and in Washington, D.C., they performed at the Carter Baron Amphitheater, Constitution Hall, Indianapolis, Chicago, Kansas, Fedville, North Carolina, among others. I'm getting tired of telling you why they've gone. <laughs> and yet these women of God today are members of the upper room. Yvette, you're married, a mother of four. Uh, Sister, Sister Patricia, uh, I'm getting the names mixed up. <laughs> married, uh, what you say, prophesy, uh, mother of uh, four. Yes, and uh, uh, Yvette, you are not married, but you're saved, love the Lord. These ladies are doing a tremendous job. And most of the members, they're going to be surprised when they see this because in their testimony, they don't talk about it. And I, and I think that the reason that they don't, and you here, you can talk for yourself, is that the highlight of their lives hasn't been touring with Gerald Levert. They didn't ask me to do this. I asked them. Because as I see Things that are ha like what are happening at The Voice, on The Voice and others, where we're seeing Christians um, on the stage where Christians ought not to be, right. that the Christian is talented enough. That's not our point. Mm -hmm. But whether or not a child of God as a worship leader in a church or an ordained minister or a preacher of the gospel should be on the world stage singing uh, for the world's reward mm -hmm. and singing songs that doesn't correspond with their profession of faith. And I just, let's clear the air. Yes, I actually believe that there's a place for music that glorifies the love between a man and a woman. Amen. I got to believe it because yes. the Bible teaches it. Yes. The Song of Solomon, of the 66 books in the Bible, the Song of Solomon is the one book in the Bible that has nothing to do with redemption. Mm -hmm. It doesn't speak to the coming of the Lord. It doesn't speak to the rapture. No devils are casted out. No souls are saved. No gospel is preached. It is it is a love song between a man and a woman. Now, husband and wife. So we, we're not against that. The issue is whether or not people who name the name of Christ should get up and sing worldly songs and, 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 uh, and thus far have sang for the Lord while trying to get uh, uh, people who don't know Jesus to turn and get the favor and the applause of the world. Mm -hmm. Now, if they were doing that singing Christian songs and stuck with the Christian songs, mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you, mm -hmm. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have a concern. Right. Because the, the example that's being shown then is, I'm staying with Jesus mm -hmm. no matter what, yeah. and if they vote me off, you know, with Christ I live and with Christ I die. That's what right. we say, right? right? So instead of that being played out, Jesus put it in the background, and, um, and, and, and the, the, uh, the Christians are starstruck by movie stars, mm -hmm. yeah. human beings who need to be saved themselves. Amen. You can never win a person to the Lord while being starstruck with uh, uh, that individual at the same time. Right. Amen. So uh, these ladies, they've been on the stage. They, they've done it. Praise the Lord. They've been there and they're sharing their testimony. So I'm going to move right along because we're running out of time. Um, Patricia, you mentioned that there was a bus incident that took place. What happened on the bus? 
It was the October of the end of the tour. It was October. We were on our way home from the tour. It was our, we had completed the last show. We were on the bus. Mm -hmm. and I think we were coming back from event. You remember? We were in Chicago. We were in Chicago. We were, and we were the bus driver. traveling back from, and the bus mm -hmm. was um, swaying. Mm. Uh, we were trying to sleep, and the bus was swaying all like no, all like all night long. And one of the gentlemen that was sitting in the up up front kept asking the driver, "Was he okay?" He kept saying, "I'm okay, I'm okay." Well, we were very concerned. Mm -hmm. Well, come to That'll find out, mm -hmm, come to find out, he dropped us off at RDU Airport. He dropped all Cleveland. three, Cleveland Airport. Yes. Mm -hmm. Dropped us off. We got off the bus. The bus driver was on his way home, and he ran off the road into a ravine and died. Oh my Lord. And the Lord was wow. dealing with me about coming wow. back to him. Wow. And it was like in the nick of time, the Lord got us off that bus. Mm. But that bus driver died. And when I heard the news, oh, Jesus. I knew God was speaking. Mm. I knew I, it was time for mm. me to come in. But it wasn't until January of 96. That was October 95. It was January 96 when I came back to the Lord. Wow. Wow. Do you recall incidences? Do you, I know you recall that one. I do. Because you're, you're chiming in on it. Is there any incident uh, that you would like to speak to before we move on that, 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 uh, that where you could see the hand of God beginning to move? Mm -hmm. Well, I did. Um, Patricia came out a little earlier than I did. Mm -hmm. um, that incident did impact my life. But at that time, I think for me, I thought it was still just doing a job. Mm -hmm. But she was ministering to me at the time and talked about it being idolatry. Mm -hmm. And um, I was singing with a local band after the drill tour. And we got an invitation to go to the Super Bowl. Okay. So once we went down, I was dealing, Deuteronomy 8 was what comes to mind. Uh, Super Bowl? Super Bowl 35. Oh, yeah? Between the Ravens mm -hmm. and the Giants. Okay. So we were invited, the local band, and but Patricia had been ministering to me about Deuteronomy 8 mm -hmm. and idolatry and how, you know, the Lord blessed the Israelites um, while they were in the wilderness and they forgot, you know, be careful not to forget the command. That's, was she still out there? She was but, not. Okay, I, by that time you had come in, you know, but you hadn't forgot your girlfriend. That's what I'm talking about, yeah. all right? So, um, the Lord was just dealing with me and on the flight to Tampa, this just kept coming to mind. And that was around the same time that those seven convicts had gotten out in Dallas or something. And something <laughs> just kept on me, like something yeah. is gonna happen. So I was there at the event, mm. at the after party, doing my thing, mm -hmm. and I had just lost a taste for it. I'm like, wow. what am I doing here? Mm -hmm. I saw the drinking, I saw everything, the partying, people having a good time. But I was in the midst of all of that, mm. superstars, mm. holding the MV trophy, the yeah. trophy that night. Mm. And it just didn't matter to me anymore. Hallelujah. So the Lord was convicting me. What a mighty and God. And how the enemy works is once I had finally decided to let that go, I wrote a, a letter to the band members and said, thank you for the experience, but I'm going with God first. I still have the letter, actually. Mm. Yeah. Um, a few weeks later, uh, they called me back and said, Yvette, are you sure we've got an invitation to go to New York for another professional team? And I said, no. Nope. I've let it go. Wow. It just did not appeal to me anymore. So yeah. I wow. came out. Amen. And you said you're going with God first. Yes. And Actually, in my letter. Not knowing, not knowing. That, that, that you end up at the upper room. Yeah. And the motto of the church is God, God first. first. <laughs> Hallelujah. How did, you, how did you meet Jesus? What, what, what happened? What well, happened? I'm, I can tell you, mine is so clear. <laughs> I avoided the holiness church, especially the upper room when I was in the world. Uh -huh. I, did, I knew there was an anointing. I knew that if I came, I would be convicted. So I stayed away as long as I could. But it was that January of 1996, I came to the, to the church and heard you preach. Mm. And the anointing was really strong. Glory the to God. The anointing was so strong Glory to that the God day. of the Bible. The conviction was so strong that I was holding on to the back of the pew mm. and my knuckles turned white. Mm. Because it was everything in me to keep from going to the altar to give my life back to the Lord that Sunday. Wow, and wow. I, I, we always say we don't want to win the fight with, uh, against Christ. I won that day. I was able to leave. But the Lord had somebody waiting in the wings at my job. Praise the Lord. On that following Thursday. Praise the Lord. We, she got me in the parking lot and basically confronted me and asked me if I wanted to come back to the Lord. And I was so at wit's end, I said yes. Thank you, so Jesus. I came back to the Lord on Thank January you, 25th, Thank you. 1996. Hallelujah. <laughs> what a powerful, yes. powerful story. Yes. Yvette, how did, you, how did you meet Jesus? What happened? Well, it was a little more interesting. It was actually Patricia who helped me. She <laughs> Praise the Lord. I remember that day and she called because we had a gig that weekend. And she was like, we can't do it anymore. We're like, what? That Friday. The Friday after the Thursday. I was like, what about the harmonies? <laughs> <laughs> so 
<laughs> we were like, okay, you know, we we'll talked to the other girl and we mm -hmm. went ahead and we did it, two part harmony. Mm -hmm. And so um, after that, again, I was thinking this is just a job, but it wasn't. Mm. It, was, it was a spiritual thing mm. because what I come to find out is that music can take you places that yes. you should not go in your head. Mm -hmm. and it's a spiritual thing. So mm. she ministered glory, to me. Glory. She actually That's like, powerful. It, 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 it's mm. who, and as a, as a woman trying to find out who God was, she helped me with that. I remember her let me listen, she let me listen to a cassette, I'm dating myself, mm. of you. It's like, wow, mm. okay, he's mm. powerful. Mm. And then to make a long story short, um, I was attending a Baptist church, mm. and I started coming here to the 7 a.m. minister and trainings class mm -hmm. while I was still going to church there. Mm. And in doing so, the Lord just started dealing with me and showing me who he really, really was. Mm -hmm. And wow. Minister Rayford here, she had introduced to me to him, helped me understand the importance of ministering the gifts that God has given us Glory. back to him mm -hmm. to help set the stage for the word to come on the scene. And I started taking it seriously at that point. And on April 25th, I was sitting in the back of the Baptist church in the very back. Mm. And I said, something just dealt with me. And I walked, they had red carpet. I walked the red carpet and I accepted Jesus and seven days later I was baptized on communion Sunday. Praise yeah. the Lord. Amen. That's powerful. Yeah. Glory. I mean, I feel like going, <laughs> glory! glory! Well, I actually did. <laughs> what, a, what a mighty God. Yes, oh, is. sweet Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, now, let me ask you this. And, 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 and Gary, if we run out of time, man, you're going you're gonna to shoot me because I may beg for one more segment yes. because this is this to me. This is good stuff mm -hmm. because these are these are believers who were there, who were who were in the parties on the stage with some of the biggest names. What I find interesting is um, you knew that once you turn to the Lord, your days for doing that stuff was over. Yes. So how do you feel now seeing people who claim to know the Lord who are actually auditioning to get into that world? I'll let you go first. Well, um, setting themselves up basically. Because mm. again, God gave us these gifts that he wants us to give back to him. And as I watch what's going on and they talk about I got my start in the church, well, there's a reason for that. The Lord mm -hmm. wants you to continue in the church. Hallelujah. He gave you that gift. Hallelujah. So having been out there, I know it's a setup because, you know, as an individual mm. who was in that world, mm. it's inevitable that they don't want you to sing for Christ. That's no. Right. That's they don't right. want no. you to say anything about Jesus. Mm -mm. Um, and that's just how the industry is. Wow. And you know what? You just said that so, you know, I got my start. Uh, in, in the Lord, in, in church, right? And they say, well, I, it's got to be the Lord blessing me. But you know what? Jesus off, showed Jesus, the devil showed Jesus the kingdoms of the world right. and the glory of them. And he says, all these will I give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. So Christ has the, the, the devil yeah. has the ability to give you platinum albums, yeah, right. gold albums, right. silver and gold and all that stuff. Uh, Patricia, how, how do you feel seeing this uh, as people, Christians now, are trying to get in? Well, I, I'm, a, I'm a straight up wood knife. I can just say it that way. <laughs> I loathe compromise. Yes, ma'am. And so when I see somebody that I know who has, has walked the walk in Christ, preaching and singing for the Lord and setting people so happy, and then they come on the stage and they just say, I'm a worship leader. Don't mention they're a preacher. The, that compromise and that weakening, mm. it, it makes me, it sickens me. Because mm. I'm like, can the Christians not stand? The Muslims stand. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Jehovah's Witness stand. They right. don't celebrate Christmas and they're not going to waver. Why do we waver? We have the real thing. We've got the truth. Hallelujah. We have all the power. Hallelujah. Why do we weaken? Why Preach, do we sister. compromise? Preach. And so it, it sickens me. I, mm. I, I don't understand it. Mm. I mean, what are you gaining? You're gaining something lesser, broken cisterns. You're, mm. you're not, you, you're leaving, you live, leaving the living fountain for a broken cistern. So it makes no sense to me. Should Christians be encouraging this behavior? Should we uh, cheer, cheer them on? Should we be glad? I don't think so. The one thing that I recall dealing with while I was out there singing in the club and then going on Sunday mornings and singing praise and worship, and I actually asked the pastor at the time, I said, I'm feeling some kind of way about this. And his response to me was, is that the Lord will deal with you. He didn't sit me down or anything. But I said, if I'm out here singing in the club, doing my thing on a Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night, and I'm getting up on a Sunday morning trying to minister and expect people to receive what I have to say, 
that's foolish. Mm. Yeah. It was foolish to wow. me. And the scriptures just, wow. you know, you, you can't live in darkness and expect to represent the light. Okay. Wow. That is, that is just, that's just that. powerful. Yes, ma'am. Well, yes, ma'am. Just to piggyback sure, off sure, what she sure. said. When I, after I got saved in June 1996, I went to a conference in New Orleans. It was, you know, a gospel Christian conference or whatever. And when I went to the, the arena, they, they had all of the vendors and all that stuff set up. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me of when I was on the road. So I was looking around. I was almost in a day. Mm -hmm. It put me right back where we were when we mm -hmm. were touring. And I, it, I, I must have kind of dazed out. And my girlfriend looked at me and she said, she said Pat, come on. And she, she shook me out of it. And the Lord said to me, and Jesus said, no man having put his hand to the plow and mm. looking back yes. is fit for the kingdom of God. Wow. The Lord said, Luke don't look back. Luke yes. 9 and 62. Luke 9 and 62. He said, don't, don't look back. Keep going. And ever since that, the Lord gave me this scripture. I have looked forward ever since. Wow. Mm -hmm. To God be the glory. Amen. And, and you added? You just the scripture that always came to mind and whenever we were studied together was to come out from among them and yes. be separate, yes. said the Lord, which you mm. stated several times, <laughs> but I can't be in it and then try to give God my best that he has given me at the same time. And, and speaking of giving God your best, you know, I, I hope that this has been as much a blessing to you mm -hmm. uh, as it has been to me to sit here and hear these women of God who have been there and who, who've done it and who survived it and came out and you know you came out of sin before it could destroy you mm -hmm. you came out before it could make you miserable right. you, you, you came out before someone would find you perhaps overdosed or mm -hmm. you're on the bus and mm -hmm. the bus turns over and, right. and 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 I, i'm grateful to god amen i, I personally right. i praise the lord jesus for you and for your witness. And, uh, and these ladies, uh, they are part of one of the greatest groups of singers in the world today. Uh, Uproom uh, Sanctuary Choir, our powerful praise team. Just throw out some of the names of the praise team that, that we sing with. Uh, Lashonda Chester, yes. Kenya Wagner, mm -hmm. um, Marlene White, yes. Beth Walters, Beth Walters Cassandra, Johnson, Cassandra Johnson, Brittany Tillett, yes. Yes. Um, Michelle Johnson. <laughs> yes. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Rob Maribel. Rob Maribel. Right, right. Yep. And uh, under the direction of uh, Clarence Rocky Rayford and along with the Church House Band and, and yours truly <laughs> get to sing with them from time to time. And we have a marvelous time. Uh, a song that I wrote not long ago is it's entitled uh, uh, He Made the Difference. And the, song, the lyrics are I was ragged, tattered, broken and torn in need of direction. I needed someone to call my own. But I heard a story about my Lord. Mm -hmm. Now I'm no longer ragged, tattered, broken, not torn. We're going to that song, just a little bit of it. And this, you know, we, we don't have the band. We, we don't have all of the praise team, but I have these two powerful women of God helping me. And you know, I need a whole lot of help <laughs> uh, as we sing this song. And the Bible says this, what say you? Well, the song we put together goes like this. I was ragged, tattered, broken, and torn. Ladies, I was in need of direction. I needed someone to call my own. Tell you what happened. I heard a, I heard a, a story. A story about my Lord. Lord. Guess what? We're no, no longer ragged, tattered, broken, no torn. Ah, yeah. Ooh. And I have direction now that Jesus Ooh. is my, my Lord. Lord. A little song goes like this He made the difference. He made a difference. He made a change. Yeah. He made a change. I'm going to serve him. Yes, I am. I'm going to serve him. My life, My life has been rearranged. Been rearranged. One more time. He made a difference. <laughs> he made a difference. And he made a change. Yes, sir. He made a change. 
worship. We're going to serve the Lord. Yes, we are. We're going to serve him. My life, My life has been rearranged. Been rearranged. Oh! My life, my life, been rearranged. Been rearranged. My life, my life, been rearranged. For the last time, my, my life, life been rearranged. <laughs> and the Bible says this. What say you? <laughs>